All right, guys, this is Forrest Blake, um, also known as Rocky Pines. I'm doing a video on Lightroom for Hive Creatives. The, go ahead and check them out on Instagram, uh, Hive Creatives, and um, check out their work. It's an awesome community for upcoming photographers. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I do my landscape and portrait work. This is going to be off Lightroom. Um, this is generally what everyone's using now. Um, I would say more so than Photoshop. I started out in Photoshop and, uh, you know, when I first started out shooting on a, a T5i and then uh, gradually moved into Lightroom and now this is the only thing I use. I'm going to show you how I would edit two photos, a landscape and a portrait. This isn't going to be necessarily how I would personally edit. Quick and easy run through on how what I think and how I edit and how I see photos. Um, so we're going to start out with, uh, let's we'll start with the portrait. Um, so this this is, uh, shout out to my beautiful girlfriend first of all for letting me use this photo. This is generally how uh, a final product of my portraits would go. Um, so I'm gonna show you kind of a rough, a quick and rough edit on uh, how to, how I would get around this. Um, a lot of people uh, have, you know, download a bunch of presets and, um, you know, just kind of throw on uh, presets and hope that it works. Um, that's, you know, all good and dandy. Uh, I kind of like to do my own. I have presets that I've created to help you know with my workflow and make everything a lot smoother but I'm just gonna show you how I would go about um, you know just free editing so this is gonna be a final product we're gonna start I'm gonna reset it and we're gonna start from scratch basically so this is a raw photo I only shoot in raw um, I would suggest you always shoot in raw uh, if you shoot JPEG it condenses the photo and uh, it, you don't you have limitations on your um, basically what you can do in, in uh, post work um, so first thing I do, I kept this underexposed on purpose because I'm focusing on the light coming in the window. We shot this, you know, maybe an hour before sunset. That's kind of, you know, the key time to, to shoot is the end hours of the day. So for Instagram purposes, um, you always always want to crop down to 4x5. Uh, that's the biggest that Instagram picture can go and it helps take up your screen so you know you don't just scroll by. You don't just, you don't just scroll by a picture, it actually takes up screen. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to crop it. And um, that's how you know, we're gonna start there. Uh, first thing I do is I, I check my white balance. Um, you always wanna make sure you have white balance set correctly first off in camera before you shoot. Um, it saves a lot of time when you do post work. If you do everything correctly while you're on location, it saves a lot of time uh, when you do post work. So this, I, I like this. Um, I might bump it up a little bit, make it a little warmer. Uh, this, you know, is in winter, so that there's a lot of blue tones. So we're gonna go over um, to basically your white balance. Uh, this is your temperature. You know, the farther down the Kelvin scale you go, the cooler it gets. The farther right it goes, the warmer. Obviously, uh, I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. You can start. Well, you can do that first of all, but you can uh, go over to you know your Kelvin temperature and click it, and you can either manually type it in or you can use your arrow keys and bump it up. So I'm gonna use my arrow keys. I'm gonna bump it up. Um, pretty, a, a good amount actually, uh, let's say, you know, that's good. And then come down to your tint. This is where you, left is green, right is, right is like a magenta. I usually, it seems a little green to me, so I'm going to bump it down. I'm going to go over to your exposures. Um, I'm going to bump it up a little bit. I underexpose it on purpose just because that's my style of shooting. That way, uh, you know, I can crush the shadows and everything. Um, so I'm going to bump it up just a slight, just a little bit, plus 10 looks good, and uh, yeah, we're going to start there. So this is your highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Highlights, obviously, the the brighter side, the shadows, you know, obviously your shadows. Whites is the, the brightest bright, and blacks is your darkest darks. Um, so this is where you kind of can get your faded look. And everything. So, but this, what, what I go through, how I do my lights and shadows, and necessarily how you're gonna do it. This is one of the sections where you start getting your, I guess, your feel for your photo, where you can, you can, you start doing your, your moods and tones. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up my highlights a little bit. Around, yeah, that looks good. And then I always crush my shadows. Um, it. I don't know. I, I just like the feel of it. it it's, it's my style. Um, you might, you know, do it differently. Um, but th this is it's just how I, I like it. Um, bring up my whites a little bit just to make it a little brighter. That looks good. And I'm gonna, we're gonna crush your, crush my blacks. Maybe down a little bit more. 
Actually, no. That looks good. So when you crush your blacks, um, th this is where you can get, basically if you wanna just do a super quick edit, just hit your hit your um, highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. Um, just from doing that, compared to you know before and after, it already looks a lot better. Um, if you're in a quick hurry, you wanna do that, get in and out, go ahead. Um, that's just a very quick and easy way to do your edit. Um, your blacks, now a lot, a lot of people think that, you know, Making blacks a lot blacker and your whites whiter, it, it adds more contrast, and the more contrast, the better. And you know, that has its place. Um, but I just, I personally don't, I don't, I don't like uh, super contrasty looking photos, especially with portraits. It, it makes everything a lot harsher, and it doesn't really complement the skin and skin tones of the model, or really allow you to see the details and everything. Um, it. it, it it limits everything in the photo basically what happens. So I always bring up my my blacks and my shadows. Uh, because I underexpose, it, it keeps my whites and highlights um, exposed properly and then I can bring up my shadows and make everything else exposed properly. Um, so we're gonna go down here to your clarity, vibrant, saturation. Um, clarity obviously is, is kind of like sharpening but it's more working with your contrast. Um, for portraits, I always, I always bump it down to negative 10. Uh, around negative seven, negative ten, that gives it a a, a very soft kind of look to it. Um, so if we go in and it's very subtle, um, but it, it it adds this this very soft look to your photos. And if you have a model, you, you don't want to crank your your clarity up because then it, it just emphasizes any skin flaws or you know really just anything that's there is going to emphasize and you know make very prominent and it, it just doesn't look good. Um, the whole I, the whole goal for having a uh, a portrait is to make it look elegant and make it soft and attractive. And if you have hard edges, you know it it, it kind of puts a rough feel on the photo. Um, let me go down to your vibrant saturation. Vibrance and saturation. A lot of people think that uh, those are the same thing. Um, it's kind of difficult for me to explain the difference. Saturation is your colors. So if you, if you boost your saturation, you're boosting all the colors. So you're going as bright of colors as possible. And then if you, you know, you crush it, then you have no colors. Um, vibrance is kind of, is just like the, I guess, amount. I mean, I, I've never, I've never been told exactly what the difference between vibrance is other than seeing it. Um, but I, I mean, I can just tell you what I do with it, but I, I haven't been able to find like a good explanation of difference between vibrance and saturation. But um, I always uh, uh, bring down my vibrance so I can boost the saturation. That's just something i found that I like. It kind of adds a more moody tone to the picture. Um, it, it desaturates a little bit without taking the color out of the photo. So we're gonna just, we're gonna just bring this down a good amount. Um, now I'm probably doing it more than other people would. Um, but that's just the feel of my photo. And then I always, you know, boost saturation just slightly, bring the color back in a little more, back in the skin tones. Um, so your tone curve. This is one of the most important parts of editing for your photos. Uh, the tone curve is where you can basically fine tune any section of any color. Um, now I have a pre-saved tone curve that I use for all my photos and I just, you know, go down and flick it on and just fine tune it from there. But I'm gonna show you, you know, instead of just doing that moving forward, I'm gonna show you basically what, you know, how, how to use it. Um, if you just open up Lightroom, you're probably gonna come to a version looking like this. Um, if you don't see that, you can come down to this, uh, this little box and you click it and it will open and close. Um, for, you know, teaching purposes, we'll go through it this way. Your black is black is gonna be down this corner. Your um, shadows are, you know, next, your midtones, highlights, and then your whitest whites gonna be up here. Um, so you, you can either, you know, manually use these sliders, and um, if you look over here, you can actually see you know, the effect. Um, so you can either manually use these sliders, you can manually punch them in if you have a set that you like to go to, um, or you can, if you click this button, you can actually physically drag um, these levels around. 
Um, so I always start with these three points. Everyone starts with th these three points. It's kind of just what you do. And um, the first thing I always do is I crush my whites. So I go up to my highest high and I bring it down. The reason I do that is because Instagram and a lot of websites portfolios uh, are on a white back on a white background, and this keeps it from having the white colors in your photos from blending into the background. So it, it keeps your eye drawn into the photo as opposed to just running off into the screen. Now with this picture necessarily, there's no really white covering, um, so you don't have to worry about that. But I always do it, and I always come up to my blacks, and I always crush my blacks a lot. Now this is this is just a style. This is how I get my faded look. This is how, you know, it, it, it's not it's not some preset or anything like that. You To get the faded look, it's all about your blacks. Um, so this, it's, if you go down to this corner, um, well, you don't wanna clip them. If you go down to the corner and you just grab it, you just bring it up slightly and it adds this sort of like tone to your blacks. It fades it out, but it keeps the detail in there. I don't know. They, they, you can play around with it as much as you want. Um, I before I used to clip my blacks pretty hard, um, and you know my style just changes every so often. But that uh, you just play around with this tone curve. You can get very technical with this tone curve, um, but I'm not going to go too too far into it. I'm just going to pull my my shadows down just a little bit and then bring my mid tones. I might keep them there. Pull these up. So I like that. I think that looks good. Um, so now next is your HSL. This is where you get your mood. This is where uh, bring colors out and, and um, crush other colors. Uh, this is how you kind of bring in em or emphasize on certain aspects and features of your photos. If you start, usually when you open up Lightroom, it's going to, you know, start here. You're going to hit this triangle and come down. You're probably going to, I think it opens up in this color. Wheel first, if you just hit your uh, HSL, your hue saturation, it'll bring you to this. Um, so, so I'm gonna, we're, we're just gonna start here. Um, we'll start with saturation. To bring out certain certain features, um, either you can guess what they are, usually your red that you see on your camera is red. Sometimes if your white balance isn't correct, what you think is red, the camera doesn't see as red. So if you, if you think something's red and you're grabbing the red bar and nothing's changing, is probably because your camera didn't pick it up as red. So if you're having that issue and you're like, oh, you know, her her hands are way too red because it's cold outside, or um, you know, the, the green back here is way too way too green, and I want to bring it down. But if you go over here and grab your green tab and nothing's happening, um, the easiest way to to fix that or to figure out what color your camera is actually reading is if you hit this little eye or little circle right here, it's going to bring up this this color finder. Um, so if you look over over on the saturation, you're going to see these things highlight and bring up and it's going to actually tell you what color the camera is reading, um, the color you see on the screen. So that, that's a very helpful tool. That's usually what, what I do is I, I find the color I want. Um, and then if you just click and drag, um, left and right, you can actually bring it, um, either desaturate it or saturate it, um, using that tool. Um, so what I'm going to do actually, um, to bring more emphasis to her and away from the background, um, I'm going to take away this yellow back here and um, this green. So I always crush my greens. No matter what photo it is, I always crush my greens down. I always, it's just the tone I, I do. I always, I just, this is what I do. I always crush my greens and I always crush my blues. So I like this desaturated kind of blue look to my photos. Um, so that's usually the first thing I do is I crush my blues and I crush my greens. So now we're going to go over to the yellow. I'm going to take away the yellow, you know, it, leave a little bit in there, but, you know, not enough to for your eye to draw. There. It's going to keep their eye focused on her and because um, she, she's the main, you know, subject of your photo. It's going to keep it, you want to keep it focused on her and not have your eye wandering. Um, so that, I like those colors. Um, we're going to go to your luminance. Excuse me. Luminance is your... Uh, how bright or dark you want these colors to be. Uh, so we're gonna go, so let's say uh, orange. We want her face, to, it's a little dark, we want it to be darker or lighter. You just come over and you can either darken or lighten it. Um, I'm gonna bring it up light, slightly a little brighter um, because I want the light to basically highlight her face more. So we're just gonna mess around with these and uh, bring a little more color back to her face. 
So I think that looks good. Um, I don't have to worry about green because I crushed the green already and I crushed the blue. So I don't have to worry about those at all. Uh, split toning. So split toning is where um, kind of the final product of your, your mood. Uh, you can change, you can add actual hints of color to your highlights and shadows. Um, so a lot of uh, movies you see will have uh, their highlights blue and no, their highlights orange and their shadows blue. Um, this is, you know, just the cinematic look and this is what they always do. Um, and it, it, that's just a cinematic look. Um, if you watch like Alien, that has a green tint to it. If you watch uh, like Django, it has this orange uh, tint to it. So th this is where you kind of get the feel for your photo. Um, it's not necessarily where you get your moods or your tone, but this is kind of how you get a feel for your photo. Uh, what I always do is I always add just a hint of orange to to my shadows. It's it's what I do. Um, it's how I get my tone. Um, so you play around with it. You always want to do opposite colors in the spectrum. So if you're going to do an orange somewhere, you should do a blue. If you're going to do a green somewhere, you should do a red or magenta. You know, you always want to keep opposite. It, it helps balance out your, your skin tones. And um, so how I got here is basically you're going you're to come to your shadows. You're going to click this box and it brings up your, your, your color spectrum. And you can just pick, you know, whatever color you want. Um, obviously, it's going to be very oversaturated. But so this is the color I want. And you're going to come down to your saturation bar, and this is how you adjust, um, you know, how much you want. I do it very, I do a very subtle tint, so six. I mean, that's not very noticeable, but if we go back, noticeable, but it's there. Um, if you, you know, this is none, and this is my six. It's, it's. Just a very subtle improvement, but it's it's it adds a, a warmer feel to it without you know overdoing the warm factor. Um, I'm not going to mess with the highlights um, because it, it already looks a little cold, um, so I'm not going to add any more you know any more I guess a colder feel to it. Uh, I don't add I don't touch sharpening. Um, I might add a little bit of noise reduction just to smooth out some edges. Um, I don't need to fix my lens correction because uh, there's no warps that in zoom. Um, I think I'm gonna add a little post vignette. Um, I always do negative five. It's just something I like. I don't add any grain. I don't like you know trying to make it look like film because it's not. Um, and then I don't touch my color calibration. Um, so now that I have you know the tone set up and everything, we're gonna go in and we're gonna fix and fine tune. Um, so I don't think my girlfriend's, you know, too happy with me zooming in on this, but, um, this is part of editing. So skin, skin imperfections, um, th this is a huge topic, um, and you can go into very complex methods on how to fix this. Um, but in Lightroom, it's very simple. If you want, you can go into, um, Photoshop and, you know, nitpick and pull everything out there, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Um, it's pretty simple it's pretty quick um, but you know it's it's not it's not the best but this is how I do it this is how I go about it so you're gonna come up here to your um, uh, what is this your, your spot removal tool and you're gonna click it so spot removal it brings up this brush um, so over here you can adjust the size of the brush and your feather is this outer circle so it helps you know blend it back into the rest of the image and your opacity is, you know, how how thick you want it to be. Um, or you can use the brackets on your key keyboard to bring it in and out. Um, I always use my brackets. I'm a huge fan of keyboard shortcuts, um, so I always use them. What you're going to do is you're going to come over to an imperfection. You're going to click and drag. It's going to bring this white brush up and let go. And Lightroom software will automatically try and find a skin section or other section that will match and blend perfectly with what you're trying to get rid of. So if you come up here, this is what Lightroom thinks will, you know, fix the problem. And you can come over here and if you don't like it, you can drag it around and, you know, fine tune what you think would look better than what the computer thinks looks better. Um, but more so than not, it's pretty accurate. So we're just gonna go in here real quick. So we're gonna, that looks good. So it, it, it takes away some of the, the major imperfections but you know we don't want to make it look like a you know glass doll um, so the next thing I do is I come over to my brush tool 
and you click your brush tool and it'll bring up this other little uh, box. So anything in this box is just like how you would for an image, but this only applies to what you draw. What I always do is if you hit Command O, it will uh, bring up and anything you color will change into this either green or red tint. So you know exactly what you're, what you're coloring in. Um, if you don't hit Command O, it'll be this black smudge thing which kind of covers up all your corners so it makes it a little harder to see what you're really coloring over so i always say commando and uh, we're gonna we're just gonna color this in this section in a little bit um, get rid of that hit command o go back to normal and you come over here you can see that your exposures drop that's why it's so black and it automatically adjusts all these things um, so if you hit um, alt on your alt or option on your keyboard you'll see this effect tab change to reset and you'll click that, and it'll change all the all your levels back to normal. Um, so what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take the clarity, and we're just gonna pull the clarity down, all the way down. And it's very subtle, but if we bring it up, you know, it obviously emphasizes everything. But if you bring it down, it kind of smooths everything out. We're also gonna do that with the sharpness, just ever so slightly. And uh, when we come back, if you come back out, um, it all it just it looks like she has perfect skin. Um, so that, that's a quick and easy way to do skin correction. Um, obviously you can spend a lot of time fixing it, but that's how I do it. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, this seems a little hot for me and these are a little dark, so I'm gonna even those out. Come over to your brush tool again and we're gonna, I'm just gonna highlight this. I wanna bring this out a little more on her. So I'm gonna come over to my highlights and I'm gonna bring my highlights up. I kind of I want to emphasize, um, I want to emphasize and bring bring more light to her face and um, you know kind of kind of make, make it pop more. And um, I'm just gonna come over and just basically paint light onto her. And now, like I said before, her chin's a little hot for me, which means uh, bright. So we're gonna come over and paint this and uh, you know make this a little darker. So it doesn't have to be perfect um, unless you're, you're trying to mask a certain thing. But for times like we're just going to do that. And uh, we'll take the shadows and we'll just bring it down a little bit. And my highlights just so slightly. And then that just evens out her face completely. Um, so now what I'm going to do is the final thing. I want, you know, I want the light coming in to look warm. So if you come over here and you click your uh, spot tool, you're, you're going to see all the locations that you've used this tool. So you come over here and you can click it, and I'm going to I'm going to click this tool. I'm going to bring up my white balance and just give it this little kind of orange glow to it. And we're going to do her hand too because her hand. Um, her hand is getting hit by that light as well. So let's paint that super quick and make that a little warmer. And so that's it. That's that's pretty close to to how it was before. That's that's a pretty good edit. Um, I would be I would post this one. Uh, if I'm gonna I'm gonna find you know pick everything. I I'd probably come in here and uh, I brighten up her jacket. You know. bring that out just a little bit more um, but I'm, I'm really happy with that photo I like that photo and I'd, I'd be happy posting that photo so now we're gonna go to uh, landscape landscape is a whole lot you know it's a different different beast come at different angles so th this is the final product of my of the landscape I actually posted this one a couple days ago um, we're gonna come in and uh, here's a before and after of what it was uh, so let's let's get into this one I'm gonna come over and reset this um, so this is what I started with. You can see way down here there's actually some people and um, it's it's just not as inviting as it was before. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna what I always start off with, we're gonna crop it. I always crop with the four by five. So center it a little bit, crop that in, or just go straight in, dude. I'm gonna do this one a little bit fast. Go straight into taking these um, these people out. So I'm going over and get my my uh, spot tool. We're going 
come in. I'm gonna um, white balance looks pretty good. I'm very happy. I'm happy with this white balance. Um, so we're gonna keep that. Um, we're gonna come over to the tint. Uh, it looks a little green uh, to me. No, actually, I, I think it looks good. And then we just got we just you just work your way down the line. Um, so since this is outdoors, um, since this is outdoors. Uh, it's always already very bright um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with uh, you know boosting the highlights or at all because it's already bright you're outside there's a lot of white which is already already a bright color um, and uh, you, you don't really want you don't want to blow out any of your colors so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually crush my highlights and I'm gonna keep some detail in them um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it without being too bright I'm gonna uh, bring my shadows up and then crush my whites again and then I'm gonna actually crush my blacks so it brings out just a little bit more detail if you can see over here especially over here in this trunk area bring out the blacks just brings out just that much more um, detail so that looks good um, clarity, so like like in how I did with portraits, portraits you always drop or reduce your clarity. Uh, landscape photos, I always bring them up. I always enhance, um, always go around 10, and it just adds, I don't know, it just makes it look that much better. I mean, it, it's, it just adds a little more um, sharpness to it. Um, you, you, wanna, you wanna add some edge to your landscape photos. Uh, makes them look cleaner and everything. Um, so anytime you do, just rule of thumb, anytime you do landscape, boost your clarity, portraits, drop it. Um, next thing we're gonna go into, uh, down to your, your uh, vibrance and saturation. You know, I always drop my vibrance. So I'll pull that down. And uh, I'm gonna drop my saturation a little bit too, because it's, it's a little more blue for me, so I'm gonna bring that blue down a little bit more. Back to your tone curve. Um, if I was doing this super quick, you know, I'd just throw my, I'd throw my uh, my preset already on there. But so hit your three points. So this is a good example of why you would crush your whites um, because you have a lot of white down here, um, some white up here in the snow, and you don't want it to blend into your Instagram or websites. So you always so crush the whites, bring up my uh, crush my blacks. And then I'm gonna bring down my midtones, and uh, I'm I like that. I'm pretty happy with that one. So now uh, we're going to your start. Always I always start with saturation. You always want to know what colors you're working with before you make them brighter or not. Um, a lot of the times I just mess. I just grab them and I see what's affecting in the photo. Um, red's not a whole lot affecting a whole lot. Um, let's see orange. Orange is going to affect the, the tree, so I'm going to bring the orange down a little bit. Um, make so. Looks a little more vintage y. Um, let's see, yellows. Uh, yellows affecting the sun on the trees up here, so bring that down. Greens, always crush my greens, so I'll always do that. I'll always crush my blues. Bring those down. So if you notice, alright, here's a good example. So anytime you shoot anything cold and you white balance it, it adds, uh, brings the Kelvin temperature down and it makes everything blue. Um, so this snow looks white, but your camera's actually reading, if you look over here, it's reading it as blue. So if you want to make it whiter, you want to take away that blue. It's, I don't know why it does it, but that's just what happens. Um, and obviously, you know, your purple magentas, not a whole lot going on there. Come over to your, your uh, luminance. Um, like I said, red didn't have to do anything. Orange. Uh, I'm gonna brighten the orange a little bit. It. If you look over here in the trunk, is a good section. It'll make the trunk a little brighter. Um, so just bring some detail out more. Uh, and uh, so, like I said, with the with the white, when I when I took away the blue, it kind of made it a little darker. So I'm gonna come back in here. And I'm gonna bring my luminance up, which brings the white a, um, a little brighter. So it brings a little more of that that tone and color back to the photo. 
Uh, next, we can go down to your highlights. Um, since this is white, I, I know I said I, I wanted to take away the blue from the snow, but I'm gonna actually add a little bit of blue back into it, into the, the picture as a whole. Um, so we're gonna go into your highlights, pick that blue, and I'm gonna, I always do it very subtle, very subtle split toning. So, I don't know, a five. It just adds this little bit of more, a little bit more uh, feel to it. And then we'll go back to shadows. Um, since we did blue, we gotta do orange. I okay, gotta do opposite spectrums. And seven looks good. Not gonna mess with, actually my, no, I'm not gonna mess with sharpening, not gonna mess with noise, not gonna lens correct it because I didn't zoom. I always walk into it. Uh, post vignetting, always do negative five. Um, here's an, another option to do something I, I do a lot when you have a lot of leading lines so all your eyes being drawn down the walkway here so these are what you call leading lines um, the trees are all lined up and your, your main focus is right here um, so what I, I do is I come over here to um, my gradient filter what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually enhance these leading lines so your gradient filter um, you just click and drag and it brings in this well gradient filter and um, this middle line is where basically the change will stop. Um, this is where it blends in and this is obviously the section that's going to be affected. So I'm going to come over here and I, I like that. And if you hit your alt button, you're going, it's going to reset all these uh, levels, reset it, and I'm going to just darken it just ever so slightly. So I darken this section. I like, so I like, I want it to be negative 80. So a quick thing to do is you double clip the middle. It's gonna bring up this bubble. Duplicate the, duplicate the layer, drag it over here. And you go in the middle line, it switches to this turn dial. And you just flip it right over. So it just, it adds, it, it draws the eye farther down because it's darker here and it's lighter here. It just draws the eye down a little bit more. Um, and so that's just an, a cool little trick I, I found out about that I really like to do a lot. Um, and that's that's basically it. Um, I would I post this picture um, here's your before and after. Uh, obviously a huge a huge difference in the colors and uh, everything. Um, but I'm very happy with this photo. That's that's pretty much it. Um, that's how I would go about editing my landscape and portraits. But go ahead and check me out on Instagram, um, at Rocky Pines. Yeah, yeah, just thanks for coming in. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. And uh, I'll put, uh, I'll link my profile in the comment section, and, or the, the description of the video. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to message me on Instagram, or um, find, uh, uh, find me on Instagram, message me, uh, comment on this video, and I'll get back to you guys as, as you know, much as I can. Um, and uh, hopefully it's answered a lot of your questions and uh, how to work um, this Lightroom and uh, kind of took away a little bit of the, the monster in photography. So uh, thanks for checking in.